Hello, I'm Jason Grenfell Gardner, the founder and CEO of the Jay Molnar Company here in Tallinn, Estonia. We founded Jay Molnar back in 2020 in order to develop new specialty generic pharmaceuticals for the markets in the United States and Canada. At the same time, we have a GMP laboratory here in Estonia for which we offer services to customers in North America as well as in Europe, including the Baltics. As I was growing this company, the biggest challenge that I've been dealing with is how do I attract and retain the talent in our business? Because it's really the people in our business that make all of it work. As you know, as entrepreneurs and as leaders in business, this is one of our biggest challenges here in the Baltics. And so I was looking for a way to really make sure that our people were engaged in the business that we were growing and developing. And it's a lot of work. I spent about a year through the end of 2021 and into 2022 trying to identify the best way to do this. And as I did that research, what came up time and again was the fact that we really need to make sure that people have an investment in the business that they're building, a share in what they're developing. So the question was, how do you do that? I looked at a lot of options. You can create phantom share schemes and different sort of stock option plans. But unless you're really trying to build a business to eventually sell it or recapitalize it or do something different, it's a little bit hard to come up with something that's meaningful. We looked at different sources of capital. You know, do we continue to fund this ourselves as we have, or do we talk to private equity or, or other sources of capital? For me, I think the challenge is that with private equity, I don't know, I have a different timeline. I'm building a business for the long term, not for the next four, five, or six years, as long as it fits into a private equity model. So I needed something that matched our timeline, our investment horizon, as well as provided that tool for employee growth and retention. That's when I started to look at what was happening uh, on the First North Market. Now, I've been the CEO of a NASDAQ public company. I've been the chairman of a New York Stock Exchange public company. I have to be honest, it wasn't my dream to be in another public company role, far from it. But if I am going to continue to grow and develop this business, I needed something that would be meaningful to our team and also allow us to really root ourselves in what we were doing in the communities that we work. So we started actively exploring the First North option. Here's what I like about it. It allows us to create those stock option programs for our employees that have real meaning, with values that are set by the market rather than arbitrarily through a scheme that I develop or something that a, a transaction or a private equity person would develop. It's the market that is driving that price, and the market is reflecting the work that we're doing. I think that's hugely powerful. And of course, because of the way that our stock option programs work in the Baltics, it's been able for us to do that in a way that's economically efficient for everybody, for the company, as well as for the employees, as well as for public market shareholders. Now, as I went down that path even further, of course, you start to get some anxiety, right? You know, how am I going to have to manage reporting? What are my requirements for corporate governance? What does this restrict the company in terms of our ability to act and so on? So what I did is I spent a lot of time talking with investors, with advisors, as well as with other companies who have gone through this journey to see how it impacted their business and the work that they were doing. I have to admit, I was surprised. I, I expected this um, from the outside to be a bit more challenging uh, 
a lot more constraining uh, and, and more difficult than it actually turned out to be. Now, don't misunderstand me. There's work to be done here if you want to go down this path in terms of making sure that you're ready to do this as a company as well as prepared to put in the work and the transparency that's necessary for this to work. For us, the timing decision to some people seems odd. You know, we were in 2022 in a time that probably many people would say is not the time that you would want to take a company public. But here's the thing. There's never a good time to take a company public. I think if any of us could choose the markets and time them that well, we'd probably be, be better off to be stock traders than entrepreneurs. Um, the reality is, I think that companies should make the decision to go public when they're ready. And what does that readiness look like? It means that you have some better visibility on your medium term plan. When I say medium term, I mean knowing what the market is going to look like as you develop your services, your business, your revenue streams, and your team over the coming 12, 24, 36 months. For Molnar, that transformation really started to happen in the early part of 2022 when we had better visibility on our drug pipeline, our drug launches, and what that would do to revenue and margins in the coming years. It was much easier for us to predict that and tell that story, even if I'm sure there will be variability along the way. So your preparedness as a company, I think, is what drives your ability to go to market, not necessarily what those external market conditions look like. I think the second fallacy, the second misunderstanding that happens in this market is a question about size. I've heard from friends in Latvia and, and in Estonia who say, oh, you know, we're not a big enough company to do this. We need 100 million euro in revenue. We need, you know, 10 million euro in EBITDA. We need some sort of magical metric. And I'm here to tell you that that's not true. I think if you have uh, a business that has a plan and a reasonable projection of the future that you can reasonably tell to other people and excite them about what you're building, then this is an interesting source of capital and it allows you to bring other people into your story uh, in our markets. And that has a lot of power. So just because your company is small, emerging, or medium-sized, doesn't mean that you can't be a public company. And I think the last part for me of this was really how much time is this going to take? Because I think we're already all busy people. The reality is our reporting requirements in the first North list are probably good corporate governance. Obviously, we have our corporate advisors in the form of our law firm. We have our auditors, which I probably wouldn't have had to have my accounts audited if I wasn't a public company. But actually, getting them audited makes us stronger as a team. Uh, it holds us more responsible to each other. And so we have that transparency as well. Uh, and then when it comes to the ongoing reporting, well, there's some things there that when you think about it, you have to be prepared for. Managing your inside information list, making sure that you are being very transparent with the things that are price sensitive to the market. Um, that has to happen. Um, and, and that can feel a little uncomfortable at first. But I think you get used to it. And the reality is, um, with the benefits of the market, you can continue to grow. The one last thing I want to say before finishing today is, uh, I want to say thank you to our investors also in the Latvian market. When we executed this, we had a choice of whether we would only do this offering in Estonia or whether we would include Latvia as well. We chose to include Latvia because we see two things that are important to us. The first is that 
Latvia has a tradition in the pharmaceutical industry that's relevant to the work that we do. Uh, there are thousands of people who know what it is to produce a pharmaceutical product and know what it means to take those products to other markets in terms of opportunity and growth. So we're excited to be able to tap into that uh, local knowledge base. The second is that I think that the investor community in Latvia is growing increasingly strong. Uh, I'm excited to see all of the things that have happened over the course of the past two years uh, as this enthusiasm continues to grow. My hope is that more companies like us uh, will join this market, will continue to share the work that they're doing and the opportunities that they have with investors in Latvia and Estonia, as well as Lithuania, so that we can continue to grow a vibrant capital market here in the Baltic states. Thank you for your time. And if anyone ever has a question about whether they should do this or what this looks like, you're always free to reach out. I'm always on LinkedIn. You can always send an email. Best of luck and thank you for your time.